Hello. Uh, today I'm going to demo how to do um, a black and white sphere drawing, something that we, we, we would have done had we been in regular class. Um, in your kit, um, you've gotten these things right here, not the bowl, but you've gotten you've got uh, a black and white eraser, two number two pencils, an ebony pencil. This is a piece of vine charcoal. You should have gotten two of them, a thin one and a thick one. Um, this is actually incinerated willow branches, so it's very much like uh, charcoal that would be left over after a campfire or something. It's, just, it's a pretty much the same thing. And then this one right here is compressed charcoal. This is basically ground down charcoal and gum arabic. It's like chalk. Um, I didn't include q-tips, but if you have some q-tips at home, you might like q-tips. They're kind of like blending stubs. But you can use your fingers, you can use paper towels, and I'll demonstrate in that, that in just a second. Um, we're going to be switching to, um, to value studies, black and white value studies, so we start to transition into more of like getting out of line and getting, out of, and getting into like a black and white photograph. So being able to um, create the texture and the light to dark ratio so that a circle starts to look like an actual sphere. So we start to create the illusion that it looks like an actual sphere. If you were in my painting class, you um, have already done this with oil paint. And really you could do it with black and white, you could do it with colored pencils, you could do it with chalk, you could do it with anything. So, so I just want to kind of go through um, and give you a demonstration of how I'm going to do this and some things to kind of look out for. So um, the first thing we want to do is um, is we're going to come down here with your chalk and you're going to go on the broad side of the chalk right here. Notice how I broke my chalk in half. If yours was whole, like a long piece, crack it in half. You only need about half of it. And I've got a piece of Reeves BFK, which you guys are going to have too. Um, you can use, you've got a, a nice piece of Strathmore, probably about a $7 sheet of Strathmore in there. You've got the Reeves BFK in there um, with the deckled edge. Actually, don't use that for your sphere, though, because that's going to be for your finished um, uh, still life drawing. So either use the two pieces of thinner, cheaper paper, or you could cut off a piece of your Strathmore. Um, you don't need a big piece of paper. Like, we're going to make this about the size of maybe like a magazine, okay? like a little bit bigger than an iPad. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the broad side of my paper here, or my charcoal, and I'm just going to create a rectangle. Now I don't want to press too hard, so I don't want it to be black, and I don't want it to be white, I want it to be kind of like right in the middle. So not black, not white, kind of a gray right in the middle there. Okay, once I get that, um, that chalk about like that, okay, so again, not black, not too light, but right about in the middle, I'm going to take a piece of paper towel, okay, just your regular old kitchen paper towel, and I'm going to go through and I want to just kind of rub this uh, charcoal in here like so. So I try to get it pretty consistent. Just about like that, okay? We've got a gray area about like that. Now, the kind of drawing we're going to be doing is called a subtractive drawing. So we're starting at about mid-tone. Again, if black was 10 and if white was 1, um, we're at about 5, 6 range right here. So we don't have our highlights and we don't have our black low lights. We have kind of right in the middle. Now, I use an ordinary bowl, okay, probably about 5 inches across, something like that. Grab a bowl um, from your kitchen or wherever, okay? Um, this one's actually a little big. <clears throat> but um, grab a bowl, and you're going to trace that bowl down. That's going to end up being your sphere. When I trace it, you might want to use your vine charcoal. Um, do not use pencil in this drawing, just because pencil and charcoal are not um, uh, compatible. So I'm going to just lightly... Draw out, trace my bowl down here, just like that, okay? And then in the back, I'm going to add a horizon line, if you remember from our perspective. 
And you can hold a straight edge up to it or a, um, a ruler up there and add a straight edge like that. Now, when we're talking about light source, because remember we want this thing to look like a, um, an actual sphere, a real sphere. If our light source was coming in like from this direction here, we would have a cast shadow around the sphere. Okay, so if my light source was that pencil, like the sun, let's say, okay, this sphere would cast a shadow something like this. We want it to be elliptical. We want it to be symmetrical. So about like that, okay? Now this area up here is going to be where our light is going to hit directly, our sphere. And then as it comes down this way, this area here, kind of like below the equator, is going to be um, our darkest area. That's going to be our shadowed area right there. Now, when we're putting our value in or our fading our light to dark in there, we're going to want um, that kind of effect like the equator. So we want that to wrap around like that. Kind of think about your perspective experience you've had and getting this to look like a, um, a sphere rather than just a circle. If we bring our lines straight across, what's going to happen is it's going to appear to be just like a light to dark disk. Okay, it's not going to look like a sphere. Okay, so the first thing you want to do in a drawing like this is we're going to actually use our eraser and we're going to start taking out our light parts. Okay, now um, you're going to have a black eraser. I recommend using the black eraser for the charcoal drawing. Okay. And then save the white eraser for any, uh, for any pencil drawings you do. You could use this. It just gets all dirty, but it, it's pretty much the same thing. So here I am with my black eraser, okay? So I want to come in here like this. And again, I like to move my paper around a little bit. So my lightest part is going to be here. So I'm going to start on this sphere, okay? And I'm going to start, stay in the lines here. And I'm going to start getting down to that paper and make this the lightest part of the sphere. So I want to get, I'm intentionally trying to get light to dark going here. Okay, and then as I make my way towards the equator, I get a little bit darker. Okay, as you can see already, I'm starting to pull that sphere out of the uh, space there a little bit. I'm going to go into this, um, this foreground, you call it. It's four, middle, and background. I'm going to go into the foreground. I'm going to start lightening that, too. Just for, like, a, the full effect. I want it to be pretty light in here. Okay, like that. So I'm pressing pretty hard on this eraser, so you want to hold your paper. And you're going to have a, um, spots where, I'm going to shake some of this off, just like so. But you're going to have some uh, spots, get that eraser junk off there. And you'll have some spots where the light is similar to that of the sphere. And that's just the way it is, and it'll all make sense when you're done here. Okay, so I can go in and I'm, I can kind of clean this up a little bit. So I want to get rid of all this tool mark here, like so. And you can, you can spend some time. I'm going to do this kind of quick, but you guys can really clean this up. We want to try to get this sphere looking like a black and white photograph of a sphere. And you actually can, you can, you can Google, you can Google the, um, a, a sphere in, in light or something, and you can work off of a photo if you want. Okay, so we're going to brush that off. Okay, now, so now I've started to dig my drawing out. I'm going to go into the background here. I don't want to go as light as I did in the foreground here, so I still want that separation like that. But I can start lightening that up, almost like a sky at dusk or at dawn. So I'm going to kind of have in the background like a fade 
from light to dark in there, okay? <coughs> oh, the dust. Okay, now that I've done that, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through here and I'm going to start adding dark. So I, I did as much light as I could and then, um, and then I, I have my mid-tone of my original gray here. So now I got to come in and start adding some charcoal to get down to that dark levels, okay? Because we want that full range of value in our drawing. So there's my dark cast shadow. I'm going to come in here around my equator, and this is called your core shadow. So I'm going to put that in there, like so. I'm going to leave an area here that's a little bit lighter, right in this area here. And the purpose of that is that's going to be like reflected light. So light that's bouncing off the, the light foreground back up onto the sphere. While I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and add some dark up in here. Just to add a little bit of an effect here. Try to get this thing looking a little bit more dramatic. Almost like having a little bit more dramatic background. Now, at this point, okay... You can see I'm, the uh, uh, sphere is starting to emerge here a little bit, okay? So now, a lot of this drawing really, and this is true for um, your last still life drawing, but a lot of this drawing at this point is really about just detail and about um, working on your, your textures and your surfaces, cleaning things up, making sure that you've got all your I's dotted and your T's crossed, okay? so. I'm going to go through here, and now I can use my finger like this, okay? Once you get into more detailed work, you can get in there with that uh, Q-tip if you'd like. You can even use your eraser to blend uh, chalk. So, you, you know, like I could come in here like that and go like that, even though I'm not taking chalk off, I'm uh, just smoothing it out. So this is a very forgiving drawing. You can You can really kind of almost mess it up and then recover. Um, that's one of the reasons why I like to teach this kind of drawing because it, it, it's a little bit less frustrating. It's going to feel kind of messy and out of control when you're first doing it because, you know, you're new to it, most of you, I'm assuming. But um, as you get uh, more comfortable with the material, you're going to find that it's actually pretty forgiving and it starts to really... Uh, you know, makes sense that this is a good medium for creating um, the illusion of a three-dimensional drawing. In this case, black and white. And again, you could do this with um, with color too. It'd be the same idea, just kind of bringing in color, kind of like what the painters do in the painting class. Okay, so now I'm going to go into my background here, and I want that kind of consistent. Uh, so I'm just taking my fingers here and just kind of blending this down and any, any little patches or anything you need to do, you just pull your chalk out here and then you're going to blend that in. You might overdo it once in a while and then you just have to get your eraser out and start fixing things. So as I blend this here. We don't want it to look like the background is affected by the sphere. So in other words, um, you want the background to look like it's uniform across the back and the sphere is not, because the sphere is there, it's not changing at all. So, so again, now I can come back and you're going to do a lot of this, this kind of back and forth. And I like to use a nice circular stroke here because it's kind of like, it sort of takes just a little bit off and it kind of does what you need it to do without getting a bunch of streaks and strokes through your drawing. I'm just coming in here like this. And we're working on our edges. Every now and then blow off that a little bit. Okay. Um, so now you know, and again, yours, yours is probably going to take a little bit longer, okay, because, I, I, you know, I've done a number of these, but 
Um, you want to kind of get a lot of the grunt work done in the early parts here. And then now what I kind of recommend doing is, is grabbing one of your number two pencils, and that's really the reason why I packed those. And you're going to go through and you're going to use that number two pencil eraser, not the pencil, but the eraser, to come in and start cleaning up edges, okay? Start doing some of that detail work, erasing, fixing edges, getting rid of outlines, cleaning up my horizon here, making it sharpen up a bit. Okay. Come in there and do a little bit more of that detail work, get that sharp edge on the side of that sphere. Okay, just coming in like that. And again, we can kind of, to give it a little bit more of that atmospheric kind of feel, you might come into your uh, cast shadow and sort of put a little bit of ambient light maybe that comes through there. So I use just kind of a scribbly eraser line here. And then I can come in and I can kind of use my finger to knock out some of that uh, tool mark that maybe you don't want there. Okay, let's, you can blow it off, you can tap it, and a lot of that comes off. If you have a little paintbrush or something, it's nice to get those little bits of, uh, of um, if you ever need to go in the middle of your drawing, you might want to use your pinky to rest like this. You can also use a sheet of paper. So I'm just cleaning up the top of that sphere. Again, notice how I'm using this circular stroke. Okay, like this. Doesn't look like I'm doing much, but I'm just taking away a little bit of uh, charcoal without really uh, leaving big marks in the thing. And going like this. And again, you may not want those strokes on there, so you can just use your finger or paper towel or whatever to get rid of that. If this is a little dark up in here, I'm going to just take a little bit of that material off. Now, before I get too carried away, let me get that finger in there to smooth it out a little bit. You might want to grab a, a cleaner finger so you're not dragging uh, chalk up into the into the dark part or the light part right there. You want to get that light really nice and light without ruining your paper. Okay. Down here, again I like to use just kind of like a cross hatching stroke like that. And we can go in and we can just take a little bit off. We want that zero to ten kind of fade in the background there okay think about like a fade haircut okay zero clippers all the way up to um, notice how my fingers are dirty so I gotta be careful I'm not I'm not dragging one value into the other but like a haircut you know zero clippers to up all the way up to number six or whatever and you want that uninterrupted fade so we're looking for that so it winds up being a, a decent amount of um, detail work in these, you know, and that's that's a lot of what you're learning here is you're just kind of learning how to control um, material and that theoretically you could do this with, um, you could do it with oil paint, you could do it with different kinds of uh, drawing material. So then you just come in here, and again, you might want a blurred edge on this uh, cast shadow here. You can sharpen it up when it gets near the sphere, kind of like that. Let's take a look at it. Okay. So about like that, okay. And you could cut it out with the scissors nice and sharp and mount it onto another piece of paper or pin it up on the wall. We want to stick with these, okay? We want that nice transition from the brightest you can get after you stain the paper. So we want light to dark. Notice how there's not a lot of interruption in that. It's a nice smooth transition from light to dark. We've got our nice cast shadow. Our light source is coming from here. The sphere is being cast right there. If you need to look up a photo on Google or something like that, 
You could do that and work from the photo if you're more comfortable with that. You can see the size of this thing, so it's really, this is actually maybe a little bit big. You could make it a little bit smaller. But the, um, the entire drawing is, isn't much larger than, let's say, a, 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 an iPad or something. I mean, it's not, not really that big. Um, but I set it up this way where I've got a um, light foreground. I've got my middle ground, which is kind of my sphere, a horizon line, and then kind of like a light to dark thing. You don't have to do it exactly like this. You could do a different version of it. But this is just kind of the generic way. And remember, it's a skill building exercise too. So it's not really overly creative. It's really just kind of getting our feet wet a little bit with doing a value study. Um, so um, I'm going to have this. I'll, I'll post this video. And, um, and of course, you can contact me anytime via email. We could, we could um, communicate in any way you want if you have questions or you need help. We are going to be showing these during our collaborate sessions um, to each other, so we're going to kind of see your progress. But I want you to knock this out before you get to, um, to our longer still life study. So I want you to get a little experience um, with the charcoal before we go to the longer drawing. So um, for now, um, thanks for watching and uh, have a good day. Stay safe. Take care.